79 night series between Hawthorne and Claremont at VFL Park, the players had to adapt quickly to the slippery conditions when the sprinkler system was activated. The Hawks adapted the better and won the match by three goals. And if that was a strange occurrence, what about North Melbourne's replacement for the galloping gasometer, Mick Nolan? Carlton's Percy Jones playing in the reserves against the Hawks didn't do much for his chance of promotion when he put his foot in it as he attempted to goal. In round 17 of the 79 season, Fitzroy played some of its best ever football in kicking a VFL record of 36 goals, 22, 238 to Melbourne's 6-12, 48. The Lions booted seven goals in each of the first two quarters, 12 in the third, and finished off with 10 in the final quarter to chalk up a percentage-boosting 190-point victory. There was no question who took out the bump of the year. Collingwood's Stan Magro made sure the Blues' Alex Jesselenko hit the deck hard in this shirt front. The 1979 Brownlow medal winner was Magro's teammate Peter Moore, but his dream season crashed later in the week when the Pies came up against Carlton in the grand final. After booting five goals in the third term, the Blues looked headed for an easy win, but the Collingwood players fought back, and with 15 minutes to go, the margin had been sliced to only four points. Carlton's captain coach, Jesselenko, was carried off injured, and it was left to Wayne Harms to produce a magic moment during the desperate battle. After miskicking the ball, he charged after it, and just as it was about to cross the boundary line, he smashed it back in field to Ken Sheldon, who goaled to ensure a narrow win. But the jubilation of Princess Park was short-lived after an internal feud over the summer months split the proud club. Jesselingo was dumped as coach and, after two rounds of the 1980 season, replaced St Kilda's coach Mike Patterson. The aforementioned Percy Jones took over the reins at Carlton. In the final home and away match of the 1980 season, Richmond dropped from top spot to third after being beaten by the Swans. Geelong took over at the head of the ladder for the first time since 1954. But the Cats lost both finals matches and the grand final was contested by the Tigers and Collingwood, which became the only team in history to reach the big match from fifth position. But the Magpies' four finals matches prior to the grand final took their toll and the Tigers recorded the largest ever grand final victory. The margin was a mammoth 81 points and veteran Kevin Bartlett in his 339th match booted seven goals for Richmond. During the 81 season, all eyes were on Kevin Cheedy's Bombers, who strung together 15 wins on the trot after winning just one of the opening six matches. In fact, after six rounds, Essendon was in 10th position. The Bombers' 15 victories was the longest winning run since Collingwood's 18 in 1929. But it was all to no avail because Essendon lost to Geelong in the last home and away match of the year, then was bundled out of the finals a week later by Fitzroy. Just before the finals started, however, the VFL was thrown into all sorts of confusion when the umpires went on strike before the 19th round. It caused all sorts of problems, but the round was completed after reserve and under-19 umpires were urgently pressed into service. The grand final of 81 held special significance because Collingwood needed to beat Carlton, otherwise the Magpies' premiership record of 13 would be equal. Late in the third quarter, the Collingwood record looked safe when they grabbed a 21-point lead. But from that point on, the Blues finished all over their tired opponents and for the first time since 1915, the Blues shared the premiership record with their arch rivals. The summer of 81 was dominated by the acrimonious debate as to whether South Melbourne should be relocated to Sydney. Eventually, the move succeeded and halfway through the year, the club was renamed the Swans. Collingwood coach Tom Hathy didn't even make it to the halfway point of the season because he was sacked after the Magpies lost eight matches in a row. In the very same week, Footscray's coach Royce Hart was also given his marching orders. Collingwood, grand finalists a year earlier, finished in 10th position in 82, the greatest fall of any club. Richmond, in Francis Burke's debut year as coach, reached the grand final with a minimum of fuss and were raging favourites to take out the premiership. But the Blues had other ideas, and their three-goal win was a personal triumph for coach David Parkin, who became the first coach since Dan Minogue in 1920 and 21 to win successive flags in his first two years at a club. 